this week we say goodbye to yet a, yet another potential classic but still another great week of uh, episodes of my favorite animes so welcome to another week of episode reviews mga ka lifestyle Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's Episode 7. What can I say about this episode? <laughs> I guess, um... The plot... The plot... The, the, <laughs> the plot is starting to thicken. Alright? So, Go... We now know that Go Corp has finally had enough of Rust Duels. So they sent in a spy named... Well, she goes by the name of Nini. Okay, let's call her Mimi. <clears throat> she was successful in stealing the uh, the book, Yuga's Book of Secrets. Okay, Yuga's Book of Secrets. Sorry, sorry, my uh, my my my, my, vo my voice is hoarse because of this. Halo halo from ang inasal. Okay, it's my dessert. It's every it's the Filipino staple dessert. Okay. <clears throat> So they, so Goa has had enough of rush duels. They sent in a spy named Mimi. Now, she was, she was successful in, in stealing Yuga's book of secrets. Okay. Napaka paranoid talaga ang mga taga Goa, no? Okay. You, you'll find out. You'll find out later. Okay. You'll find out later in this review. So, well, Yuga is actually going to give it to her. Okay? But she refuses, okay? which results in a duel. Okay? If Mimi wins, she will return the book. Okay? But if Yuga wins, he will gladly, he will gladly let Mimi keep the book. Okay? It's wow, baliktad, <laughs> baliktad yung eh. baliktad yung stipulations. Eh. Normally, um, of course, to with, with that mindset, eh. with that. With that type of mindset, hey, usually the mindset would be if you the mindset would be like this, the normal mindset, right? If Yuga wins, he takes the book back. If Mimi wins, she keeps the book. Ganun dapat eh. But here, for the sake of having a rust duel, they twist, they put a twist to the stipulations. Alright? So eventually, Yuga won. And introduce and was able to introduce his new ace. See um, Brave of Dawn Light Across. Right? Can't wait to can't wait for that card to become an official one. But more likely it'll more likely it'll be released as a Rush Duel print. Pero sana, no? <laughs> I'd like to have uh, I'd like to have I'd like to have that kind of spellcaster in my deck. Especially if I'm using uh, if it's a level seven, I would put that in the uh, I would put I would put that in my Draco Aurora deck. <laughs> Puro 7 yun. Puro level 7 ng... Puro level 7 yun eh. Now... <clears throat> um, of course, Yuga... Let her have the book. Eh, our lead... The lead character is that generous. Okay? He's not holding any secrets when it comes to Rust... When it comes to the game format he created. Obviously. Okay? He's willing to give it away. He's willing to give it away. He is the... um. Yuga Odo, you can compare Yuga Odo to uh, to one of the greatest scientists who ever lived, Nikola Tesla, right? Who's probably one of the most generous, one of the most generous scientists who ever lived. Because eh, when he discovered alternating current, he wasn't asking, he wasn't actually asking for anything. He just wanted, he just want everybody to know that there is such a thing, and he wants to, um, he wants to make alternating current available to the masses okay the same as yuga right he holds no secrets when it comes to the rush to, to the rush dual format the format he invented okay he's not holding any secrets back he's not holding any secrets so he was more than willing to give that book of secrets to mini <laughs> eventually um goa management has found out what the context of the book was Puro mga artwork lang, right? And now they're having these conspiracy theories now. Maybe it must be in the ink, it must be in the post. Holy shit! 
Is the enemy that dense? <laughs> is the enemy that dense? Holy shit! They can't, they can't tell the difference between a, uh, a book of secrets to a book of artwork. A book, a book of mecha artwork. <laughs> Are they not stupid? <laughs> Are they not desperate to um to to remove the rust dual format from their servers? <laughs> Are they not desperate? But anyway, overall, it was a good episode. Except for that um that one scene where where Yuga activated a card effect where and he froze for a few seconds. I think that broke the momentum of the duel. All right. It it was it was a moment where he was trying to buff. He was trying to buff Seven's Road Magician's uh, attack with an effect. And that's when he froze. I think that's for a good two seconds. All right. For me, it um it probably broke the momentum of the scene of that particular uh, sequence. Okay? But. Um, that's that's the only uh, that was the only bad point I saw in this episode. Overall, it's it's again a good one, right? And haven't you noticed? Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is actually following the format of Duel Monsters when it comes to the lead character's circle of friends. Okay? In Duel Monsters, if you if you guys still remember, okay, that was 20 years ago. In Duel Monsters. Yugi only had three close friends. Apat lang sila sa barkada. Okay? His circle of friends, his circle of friends only consisted of three people. Joey, Thea, and Tristan. Okay? Those, those are their those are their names in the US and in the US version of the anime. Yeah. For for description purposes only. Alright? <clears throat> he only had those three people in his circle of friends. Same here with Yuga. He has Romin. He has Rook. The self-serving Rook. <laughs> I think of all the surf the self-serving anime characters I have uh excuse me. Of all the self-serving characters that I have ever come across, Rook takes the cake. <laughs> this guy is so vain. I am I am still clueless as why Yuga is still keeping him in his circle of friends. This guy is so vain, right? Which well, which makes the um, his circle of friends more interesting. And you also have the uh, the very nerdy okay, Kakoto. So you only have three. So the lead character here only has actually only has three people in his inner circle. And you think and you think seven is trash? Well, just take a look at. How many how many close friends the lead character has? The same as with Yugi Moto. Right? Studio Bridge. Studio Bridge. And in this in this instance, Studio Bridge has actually taken a page out of Dual Monsters' playbook. Okay? The circle of friends. Yuga only has three in his inner circle. Yugi also has three in his inner circle. So, to all those who think that Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is garbage, you might want to watch the first seven episodes. Okay, you might want to watch the first seven episodes. And oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you to change your mind after those, after watching the first seven episodes. I am just telling you to watch the first seven. I almost forgot to mention. Okay, I almost forgot to mention. It's another fan service episode. Why? Because Mimi's deck was able to summon three, uh, three monsters from the early part of the card game, right? Excuse me. She was able to summon three legendary monsters, okay? Which obviously their, their, names, their names were changed for uh, for this particular episode. <clears throat> But their, um, but their get up, but their get up and their looks are almost the same as the, the original ones. Particularly, uh, Dian Keto. Okay, she was patterned after the original. Dian Keto, the Cure Master, right? 
Dean Kento, the Pure Master, is a, is a, has the graphic of an old fat, la- a fat old lady with holding uh, holding the ankh. Okay. The the symbol the symbol in Monster Reborn, the symbol in the card Monster Reborn. He's, she's holding that the ankh. It's called an ankh. But here, her name is Dean Kento, the Gold Digging Master. <laughs> Obviously, Mim Mimis Mimis Deck utilizes um, newer, uh, sexier versions of these legend, of these uh, of these old school monsters, okay? I was also surprised that Mystical Elf could be that hot. <laughs> could be that sexy. See, Mystical Elf, all right? I once had, I once had a, I once had a card like that, Mystical Elf, all right? The original Mystical Elf is a normal monster. Na talagang, uh, what you call this? Uh, really conservative, uh, like a like a priestess, I guess, holding like in prayer like that. But the mystical elf here, I thought I thought it was a, I thought it was in a singles bar or something. <laughs> Again, another fan service moment. Okay, kudos to Studio Bridge for uh, bringing breathing new life into those into those old monster cards and giving it. Uh, giving it, uh, giving, and well, bring it, bring it back to life. Actually, with Yu-Gi-Oh Sevens. Yeah, well, again, overall, it's a good episode. It's a good fan or a fan service episode. All right, it's a good fan service episode. This is actually the backstory. Uh, of the character that was that was recently introduced in the last episode all right see kaito okay this episode uh, tells about kaito's backstory of how well i guess uh, he made the most terrible mistake of his life when he killed one of his best friends thinking that thinking that that girl killed one of another one of his friends but as the story went on the first uh what this? Honoka okay I mean Aiko Aiko actually killed herself Honoka was the only one to saw her dead to see her dead body hanging from a tree she told this to the alien and no one else Okay. She told no one but the alien, and then eventually the story the story went out. Honoka went to the alien actually not just to tell to tell to tell the story, but to be Aiko. That was exactly what she wished for when she surrendered her coin. So eventually, she became Aiko. And Kaito suspected that that is not the real Aiko. So they met in their old cram school. That's where he killed. The, that's where he killed Honoka. Upon realizing that it was Honoka, he made he was um, he was instantly um, riddled with guilt. Right? He was instantly riddled with guilt. He thought. I just made the biggest fucking mistake of my life. All right? Okay. I think that led him to to look for a coin, surrender it to the alien and grant his and have his wish granted. No wonder he calls the spirit that comes out of him Honoka. Because that was the name of the girl he killed. That the girl of the girl he murdered that day. I think he was trying to make it up. He was trying to make it up. But too late. The girl's dead. Okay. Bringing her, bringing her back as a um, sort of... What do I call it? What do I call it? A stand? <laughs> Sorry, Jojo fan. That, 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 um, that, actual, that actual scene, the final scene from the previous episode, looks more like a Jojo reference. Alright, look, look more, it looked more like a Jojo reference. 
because that spirit was coming out of his body and started started cutting people up around him and yeah <clears throat> that backstory set up the uh, eventual investigation by Claire to the old cramp school Shuichi was uh, allegedly Shuichi allegedly enrolled in but when all this was going on we all found out that Shuichi, Kaito, Elena, and the two girls that are now dead, Aiko and Honoka, they were all good friends. Magbabarkada pala sila. They went to that very same cram school. Cram school is what uh, what the Japanese call schools where in working parents leave their kids to go to work. You know, that's the purpose of it. In Japan, they call it a cram school. Here in the Philippines, we call it a daycare center. You get now you get the uh, you get the correlation, some, somewhat, right? Again, in Japanese, it's called a cram school. Here in the Philippines, it's called a daycare center. Even in even in the U.S., it's called daycare center. But in Japan, it's called cram school. So they were they are, they were all enrolled they were all enrolled in the same cram school. All six of them, actually. All six of them. So they became good friends until this incident came along. And I think the only unresolved matter here is how Shuichi lost his memories. A, a tragic moment like that, it's not that forgettable. All right? You lost a good friend. Okay? A good friend of yours died. Much less two. Okay? Two of your best friends died. That's hard to forget. Okay? And Shuichi doesn't remember anything. Okay? I think this is the only unresolved matter in this in this show. That's the only unresolved matter. So eventually, at the end of the show, Claire finds out how Shuichi uh, got to decide on who he, who he wants to look like. Right? There was a stock toy. There was a plushie in that same grad school that looks exactly like the uh, the transformation he get. The, the transformation he gets into he looks exactly like that it's probably probably one of his favorite uh what's one of his favorite toys in that school i think more likely he plays he plays he plays with that he plays with that the most often so he probably that was the first that was the first thing he, that that was the first thing it, that went through his mind that uh, that came out of his mind so he decided to to be that kind of transformation but 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 we'll never know i think we'll i think we'll we'll know about that in future episodes okay? and of course the episode ended with uh helena claire's older sister who becomes that becomes that that that, that crazy that that scary demon that scary spirit all right that freaked me out all right when when she when she showed her transformation okay it almost freaked me out <laughs> But okay, she she was again talking was to she was again talking to Yoshioka. Yoshioka called her. That's where the episode ended. Well, overall, Gladiator is getting creepier by the episode. Okay, it's getting it's getting creepier by the episode. Mind you, while the backstory while the backstory was being told. The conversation between Claire and Shuichi was going on. Claire was actually in that cram school investigating. Okay? She was trying to figure it all out. Then of course Shuichi was in the junk shop killing the last member of the gang they the gang the gang they ran into when they were in the forest in episode 12. Was it, it was, the last member of that gang that survived? Okay? The sole survivor of that fire. Shuichi finally kills him. Okay? In cold blood. Um, that guy was escaping. He suddenly pulls up. He suddenly pulls out that very big gun of his. Bang! Ends it right there. He ends the conflict right there. So uh, while all of that was going on, this backstory comes along, episode 13. So we all know how Kaito became that, how Shuichi became that, and um, and probably what. And probably how this series will end. Okay, for me, 
It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> it is not going to be pretty. I think the uh, the end to this, the end to glide there, it could be uh, probably, if not the most psychotic, it will be the creepiest, the creepiest I've ever seen. That's my that's my fearless forecast on the uh, on what the finale will be, All right? So overall, Gleipnir has Gleipnir has again lived up lived up to the hype. All right. Now surprisingly, right? If you guys know what Kiss Anime is, Gleipnir has just overtaken Tower of God at the number one spot on Kiss Anime. I just checked. They're now they're now on the number one spot, and Tower of God is gone from the top ten. Because well, normally when a show ends, it's it doesn't uh, doesn't get watched doesn't get watched anymore until such time that uh, well uh, another season comes along or uh, like something like a live ad, a live action adaptation or an OVA comes along, it gets watched again. That's the only time. Yeah, Gleipnir is again number one on Kiss Anime. <laughs> so, again, another good episode of Gleipnir. It's lived up to the hype again. Kudos to the animators. Well, I can't wait for the next episode. It has, <clears throat> the title of the episode has, has already been previewed, has already been teased by uh, by this episode and um, it's a somewhat um, it's the title is very ominous the, uh, as one it's I already forgot the last two words are as one I hope this is not the finale <laughs> I hope this is not the finale all right so yeah again Gleipnir has lived up to the hype again with this episode if you haven't watched Gleipnir I strongly suggest you watch it now you better watch it. Down to the last. Power of God, episode 13. It's, um... Uh, generally, I don't think this is the... I don't think this is the series finale, okay? Power of God is far from over, even in... Uh, Probably even in the manga and the webtoon, but in this episode, wow! Rachel has finally showed her true colors. All right, she is an evil bitch. Okay, she's an evil bitch. She has been, what? Well, she has been using Bam from the start. Okay, somehow. The Guardian of the Tower, the one that's um, the one that's doing the initial screening, the one that looks like a rabbit, the one with the uh, with a two bald staff. Somehow, that guy uh, figured it all out right beforehand. That bam, although an irregular, is is the chosen one. Bam had a, has a hidden power somewhere in that that small body of his. Okay, <clears throat> and well, Rachel believes him. Rachel believed the guy, and she has done from the what? Well, from the get go, she wanted to kill Bam, believing that it's the only way to climb the tower. Okay, she wasn't chosen, although she is a princess of Jihad. She wasn't chosen to climb the tower, but Bam was. Unbeknownst to Bam, okay, only, only the rabbit-looking, only the rabbit-looking guy knows. Well, if you think, well, it's a great follow-up to episode 12, which I believe, which I still believe to this, <clears throat> excuse me, which I believe to this very day that it's the show's best episode. It's a great follow-up. Okay. I thought Bam would die, but obviously he didn't. Uh, a former, well, a fellow Isamini actually, actually saved him. Okay. 
there was there's a um it's called this there's a um there is a group of people that actually wants that actually wants bam to, cl to climb the tower actually working behind the scenes working behind the scenes to to preserve him to preserve his, to preserve his existence okay that was proven in the in this episode okay what would what i would call um the season finale okay i strongly feel that there will be a season two of tower of god okay this is a good anime not to um not to make a season two out of and put not to put a season two not to not to instantly put out a season two for okay? it's season two should be um season two should be made quickly okay tower of god deserves it and it showed in its final two episodes okay wow season finale the season's final two episodes right we now know because of episode 13 how much of a crazy bitch rachel is okay and despite what well, despite well realizing that rachel screwed him okay, he got screwed by by rachel herself bomb is now more determined than ever to climb the tower okay to answer the unanswered questions more likely he wants to make rachel accountable for her actions he wants to make her accountable all right after all he's done for the girl this is the thanks he gets well if i were in bam space i would i, I probably would do something much worse <laughs> to tell you honestly i would probably do something much worse okay now the ending the the ending to the episode is uh, quite a puzzle, all right? The body, the body that's that, the body that was shown there, I think that was, that was probably the bull's body. Someone actually killed the bull. And I don't know who that person is, okay? I'm taking a wild guess right now. I think it, I think that's Bam. All grown up, he finally gets his revenge at the bull. He finally kills him and I think he has already climbed the tower okay because that was the uh, that was the final that was the final part of the episode and I don't know if that's Bam himself long hair long hair and all and long hair and all tall height with the body with the carcass of the bull behind him a bloody bull right and dead okay? bloodied and dead so yep it's what we would it's what we filipinos would call bitin <laughs> but bitin in a good way not in a uh, not in a bad way okay <clears throat> because this episode has has shown us um the dark side the dark side of the other female lead but i'm sure by season two when season two comes around she's no longer the female lead it's all bam from here on it's all bam from here on end from from this episode okay it'll be all about bam now that's what i that's what i see rachel will probably be the real villain here come season two because she has shown to be the the actual villain of the show so yeah that's the psychological aspect of power of god now, I won't be. I'm not surprised. I I, I actually saw the video of uh, Joey the Anime Man as he, when he tabulated the 100 greatest manga of all time. Tower of God is in the top five. Uh, Tower of God is in the top ten. Although it's a new it's a new manga. All right. When it was announced that Tower of God is in the top ten, I wasn't surprised. Okay, the anime the anime was really good. Okay, this. Its anime adaptation is really good. So, I'm hoping for a season 2. <laughs> I'm hoping for a season 2. All hail Tower of God. That's all I can say about the entire series. Well, the the uh, the season finale, episode 13, is a bit of a... It's, 
it's a uh, micro drag because of the uh, because of the final part. All of Bam's, all of Bam's friends and acquaintances actually they all, they all, kind they all went to the top of the tower at the same time. But I don't know, I don't know which of them went was able to to reach the top first, whether it be Bam or that circle of friends he has earned over the course of this anime. Okay, I don't know which one went which one went first. Which one of those guys went first. But we'll probably find out in season two. If there is one. And I hope and I'm hoping that there is one. <laughs> I'm hoping that there is one. Alright? I'm not well I'm not actually into uh, animes based on manhwa, but Tower of God changed all that for me. Okay. Tower of God and I forgot the other one. It's already been a night. Um, I forgot the other the other name. Ah, Somali in the Forest Spirit. Those two manhwa changed my changed the way I look at manhwa right now. Those two animes changed the way I look at manhwa. Right. The first manhwa I actually, uh, the first anime based on manhwa that I actually came across was Ragnarok the Animation. Okay, it was a long time ago. That was that was 2004. Okay. That was 16 years ago. Now that these recent years that manhwa is starting as has um, gotten a foothold on the anime business, well, thanks to someone in the forest spirit, then now Tower of God completely change the way I look at manhwa we should not discount manhwa okay I'm addressing to all the Filipino anime fans we should not discount the manhwas they are getting better by the year they're getting better by the year I'm I'm telling you those manhwas are producing anime adaptations that are wow that actually stick to the original storyline Right, and actually stick to the original storyline. I haven't read the Tower of God man manhwa. Right, I haven't read. I haven't. I haven't even seen the webtoon version of Tower of God. All I'm basing it right now is the anime adaptation. Okay. I guess, yeah. It would still. I would still address to the, the Filipino anime fans. Do not discount the manhwas. All right, with animes with adaptations like. Somal in the Forest Spirit, Tower of God, and the up and coming God of High School, you should take them seriously. You should take their anime adaptation seriously and start watching them. Right? So, overall, a fitting end to Tower of God Season 1. Hmm? Season 1, please! Please give me a Season 2! Please, guys, give me a Season 2 of Tower of God. I'm, I'll definitely, I'll definitely wait for that. Okay, now that um, the now that the um, the anime has taken a darker turn, a more um, a creepier turn. Okay, the way that Rachel laughed in that episode, it creeped me out. Actually, right, it creeped the shit out of me. I thought, holy shit. This little girl's the devil in disguise. <laughs> so, Tower of God episode 13. Alright. Actually, two thumbs up. It's a fitting end to... Uh, to... The debut season of the Tower of God anime. Kudos to the animators. So, well... I hope there, I hope there will be a season 2. I, I'm really praying right now that there, that there will be a season 2. Okay? 